long ago, there was a volcanic island hidden in the confines of the oceans. A queen of great beauty exercised a power without limit. Monsters out of the mists of time protected this treasure. It derived its power from the bowels of the earth. The queen's subjects extracted precious colored stones. Made in the flames of hell, they were of an unequaled brightness and strength. These gems were colored diamonds, and the island, Borneo. Cyril Mott comes from a generation of jewelers representing a new trend. He chose the city of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates to reveal his creations. My jewelry, first and foremost, is color, mood, sound, smell. And then I go and I draw. So I call my ornaments Bali, Zen, Samurai, Flamingo. This covers a broad scope, and it's really the result of a fleeting emotion. I'm very, very true to my drawings and our designs. We work hard on our drawings, and after, the quest for stones can begin. It's something that's driven by the workshop in Paris. Often I go into forms, volumes, sizes that are virtually impossible to find. And since I'm working in color, especially for diamonds, that's very, very hard to find. I'm not just making jewelry. I try to apply this to all other media. I'm developing a project that's very close to my heart with a technical development called stick setting. Uh, it means setting that is stuck on and glued and not a traditional setting. I reworked all of the elements, the so-called fitting points of an Aston Martin, and I am in the middle of the development of a study. We dismantled an Aston Martin. This is something absolutely huge. We worked on it for six months. As such, I decided to do it in brown diamonds. Between 40 and 50,000 stones, which we're going to take and from which we're going to select six or seven thousand stones, which must all have the exact same color variation, uh, which we specified and decided on based on the color of the bamboo veneers on this car. And the place we think we should go to find these is Borneo. Borneo, with its thick jungles, its wetlands, its headhunters, and giant rivers, has made more than one adventurer dream. The south is part of the Indonesian archipelago, which is formed by 17,000 islands and a unique ethnic diversity. On this volcanic soil, more than a million years ago, our distant ancestor, Java Man, took his first step. The Indonesian part of Borneo is called Kalimantan. It has many riches. The Dayaks, once formidable hunters, Christianized in the 16th century, are still a strong presence on the island, despite a policy of resettlement organized by the Indonesian central government in Jakarta. This country is a natural reserve of oil, gas, timber, and an extremely rare and valuable mineral, the diamond.
Little known, even to specialists, the southern region of Borneo has produced extraordinary colored diamonds for centuries. World travelers Marco Polo and Tavernier mention this in their works. Hello, welcome to Pontianak. We'll take you to the district of Landak, where the diamond mines are. Let's go. In the southwestern part of Kalimantan, in the Pontianak region, and especially near the Landak River, is rich in colored diamonds. It's in the city of Naban that the trade in diamonds from this region is concentrated. This is the, tradi this is the traditional diamond market of Naban. There are all kinds of diamonds in the shops. You can find diamonds that are colored or white. Diamonds, fancy diamonds and white diamonds. And most of the sellers are the diamond miners. Most of the sellers are miners who search for diamonds. And people use diamonds for beauty or... Yes, diamonds are used to make jewelry, but also for susuk. What is susuk? Some people believe that susuk can make you more beautiful and stronger. They believe that it has a bulletproof effect, that bullets cannot enter the body. The ancient tradition of Susuk, practiced by some imams, consists of implanting diamonds under the skin. There are several kinds of Susuk cultures in Indonesia and Kalimantan. Especially in the vicinity of Banjar Masin. In Banjar, or in the southern part of Kalimantan, but also in North Sumatra and Java. It turns out that the culture of Susuk is very popular in Java because it has commenced with the nobility and the palaces. They use susuk to enhance their inner beauty. Commonly, women use cosmetics and jewelry, but the Indonesian culture considers that something that exists in the depths of each person can be roused by the use of susuk. This susuk has the characteristic to amplify what's inside us, things such as beauty. And each region has its own art in accordance with the history. In Kalimantan, originally, the susuk were done with rough diamonds, which were placed on the beams of the house or in the roof, whose primary purpose was to protect it, that it be strong and be the pride of its owners. For the occupier, susuk makes the atmosphere calm, harmonious, and from which emanates a sense of peace and serenity. Popular belief says that the susuk also has a spiritual aspect, or a magical aspect, that repels harmful actions and bad spells. We are going to see the diamonds. Let's go see the diamonds. You see there are many vendors in front of the shops. And you can purchase diamonds here. You can buy the diamonds here, uh, and the system is cash and carry. The system is I pay and I take. Around, uh, That's about 1,500 euros, but here you can haggle and negotiate. But here you can bargain. How many carats is it? How many carats is this one? That's more than two carats. Which color? Uh, yellow. It's a uh, colored diamond. What color? Yellow. Yellow, deep yellow. They have other colored Do they have other colored yes. diamonds? Uh, but, uh, today yes, but they, they today they have not brought them. Yes. Yes, you have to make a. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, which day? Yes, you, you must make an appointment. Yes. Tell them what day you will return. Blue 
Yes, they have Do they have blue or any other color? Yellow. Yes, red, blue, green, yellow, brown, and white also. He's a broker. He buys the stones from miners and sells them on the market here. These are his stones? Are these your stones? Yes. Yes, they are his stones. Best color diamond. Do you have better color diamonds, such as blue or green? Blue, green, or... Better colored pinks, for example? Yeah. No, not today. Today I have none, but occasionally I have red, blue, pink. What's the hardest color to find? The most difficult color to find is, is blue here in Naban. We often find pink or red. At a half day's trip lies the Landak River. In Dayak, the name means River of Diamonds. Small villages are concentrated near the river. They are the only means of communications with which to penetrate the thick, damp jungle, or, conversely, to go back to civilization. It is a means of survival for the people of this country. People who live in this forest are mostly Dayak and Malay tribes. Dayak tribe People who live in this jungle are mainly from the tribe of the Dayaks and Malays. The Dayak tribe has their own land, separate from the land of the Malay. Some tribesmen of the Dayaks and Malays work in the diamond mine. This jungle is in the Landak district, and this district is known for its color diamonds. It is very famous with the color diamonds resources. Dayak tribes that inhabit the forest live in wooden houses. They have their own bathrooms and toilets along the river. They have a bathroom and toilet along the river. They believe that forest. They believe that the forest is their ancestor. Their ancestor. So a forest for them is very important. The forest is very important to them. They cannot live without the forest. They protect it as they would their own ancestors. The younger generation thinks they need more money. They cut their own forest that belongs to their ancestors. They cut down trees to open up farmland or plantations of palm oil. To open the oil farm, palm oil plantation. But basically, the the Dayak tribes. But generally, the Dayak tribes try not to destroy their forest. It's the logging companies that come and cut more trees. This issue is the logging companies. Uh, cut the trees in the forest much, much more than the Dayak's tribe. Along the river, after several hours of navigating, the first diamond operations appear. They're usually located near water to wash the ore rich in gems. Working conditions are extremely harsh in this hostile environment. The humidity, mud, and moist heat are the daily life of miners. The Dayak tribe the Dayak tribe has its own land. Have, uh, their own uh, land. And they mine the diamonds from there. And they land. exploit the diamonds. They, they, work, in a group. they work in groups. There is a, There's a leader. Uh, there is a leader. 
a group of in one group you 10 or so individuals or more or more than 10 people the bigger the larger the group the more chance they have of finding diamonds is the the more opportunities to find more diamonds and then once they once they have found them they sell them to local buyers and they share the income among all the members of the group and then uh, they share the, the income to all the uh, group members. Deep in the forests, the Dayaks have discovered rich deposits of diamonds. Colored diamonds from Borneo are little known, yet the mines were already operating at the time the famous Golconda mines in India were exhausted, in the 17th century. Without producing an extremely large amount, these mines continue to produce for centuries exceptional colored stones. In Borneo, the exploitation of these precious stones is made in deposits known as secondary. Here we do not find diamonds in the places where they were originally formed. The colored diamonds were trapped on top of ancient volcanoes, in the rock, when they were formed. Erosion created by water runoff, wind, and other weather destroyed the rock. Crystals, thus torn from the rock, were taken to the valleys and into the riverbeds and transported by the current. Their higher density allowed them to be trapped and concentrated in large quantities in any holes. Alluvium carried by the rivers covered the diamonds. Then the rivers dried up or were diverted leaving rich deposits in the soil of the jungle of Borneo. Women clean the ore in pans that are large wooden trays. They allow, by turning them in the water, to concentrate in the center the denser minerals, like diamonds. This is done with great agility and great skill. They extract the precious stones. I'm 20. My big brother is a logger. He has no fixed employment. He can sell wood or be a motorcycle taxi. He's done all kinds of work. His wife stays at home. She's a housewife. My little brother, called Albertus, he's in school in Gabon. My mother does not work. She owns the machines. We are her employees. The land where we look for the diamonds belongs to the family of my mother. Despite the invasion of Borneo by the Dutch who Christianized the Dayaks, the people kept cultural and religious traditions that are still very present today. The Dayak community often calls on shamans who use magic. Their powers are supernatural and paranormal. They allow them to help the Dayaks to solve many of their problems. It's for this reason that Evit never fails to take advice from them during the ceremony called this ceremony occurs only once a year. Shamans use a very special music called kabawak that attracts the spirit of the ancestors to cure the villagers. The shaman first brings the soul of the patient's body, and it brings out the evil spirit. Then he must find the cause of the malfunction. Evite is worried for her mother, who is ill. 
She finds little diamonds these days, not enough to support her family and pay for their care. To locate the evil, the shaman uses a huge diamond. Placed on the patient's face, the crystal will be the mediator to read his health problems. Then the shaman will review the diamond, saying prayers for the stone to reveal the secrets of this sick body. It is the ancestors who will solve the problem. The shaman must get in touch with them. He raises a red scarf to his head. Red is an important color to the Dyax. It will be the link between the wizard and the spirits. When death is lurking and could take a soul, he swings his arms to warn the spirits that they must act quickly. The Dayaks transmit from generation to generation many traditions. This dance, called Panyu Barang Atak, is a scene that recalls a prince and his courtiers. Its main attribute is Chris, a long dagger whose hilt was often covered with colored diamonds, a symbol of the extreme power of the sovereign. In some cases, the blade was made up of nine types of steel from nine different countries, mixed with metal from meteorites. This mixture was forged and hardened for 40 days, and then washed in 12 different rivers. This ritual, associated with the mystical power of diamonds, gave the chris supreme and absolute power, which it passed on to its holder. Nama saya Kanjeng Raden Tukimin Wisanggeni Kuno Diningrat. My name is Kanjeng Raden Tukimin Wasaneji Kuno Diningrat. I live in the palace courtyard. I followed His Majesty wherever he went for a long time. It was the King Pakubuwono. Penjajah Belanda pada waktu itu, yaitu VOC, di mana semua budaya the kingdom of Sukarata Hadiningrat underwent many influences during the Dutch colonization. Bangunan-bangunan, atribut-atribut masih sangat kental dengan peninggalan-peninggalan dari VOC yaitu India Belanda. The East India Company left heavy footprints, whether in culture, architecture, clothing, or diamond jewelry. The palace houses many relics of royal jewels, especially diamonds from Kalimantan, the most beautiful were cut in Europe, mainly in the Netherlands, Italy, and Germany. Those from the Netherlands were used on the regalia, such as the king's crown. The palace still has many items, including the royal chris and other attributes. Most of the regalia were decorated with colored diamonds, but also rubies and sapphires. Diamonds are still the most numerous. Juga untuk Adelaide, juga mahkota raja sendiri banyak.
mudah gitu karena dia menggunakan mesin. I work in the diamond mine. I quit school in order to work in the diamond industry. It takes half an hour to walk to get there, sometimes less by boat. The alluvium, collected by pumps, are sent along with water onto huge screens. Wooden bars are placed perpendicular to the stream. They let through the earth and block all the stones, among which are the diamonds. The water is stopped and the sorting can begin. My whole family doesn't work in the diamond industry. For example, there are some who are in the timber sale. We share activities. The work is not very difficult because there are machines. It is difficult when they break down, but we cannot say it's hard work when the machines are working properly. We do not often find diamonds. Sometimes you can only find one. In a day's work, we find two or three, depending on the place. I even have a friend who recently found 20 at once in the same place. Where I am, I found three. Most often, there are four diamond colors, white, rainwater colored, yellow orange, gray, and amber, dark yellow. The largest diamond I found was over four carats. I never found any bigger. I usually sell the diamonds to the outpost upstream, at the river, and in Pontianak, I go to the Chinese. Payment is in cash. If one day I find a big stone, I would seek a buyer who would offer me the best price. Regardless of whether Westerner or Chinese, it's the price that matters. Nama saya Aisparto, berasal dari my name is Ais Suparto. I am from the Gabang District, Department of Landak, Kalimantan, Barat Province of Indonesia. I work directly at the diamond mines. I come to the mine four times a week, so 12 times a month. I buy diamonds that are 4 carats, 10 carats sometimes. Recently, I bought a diamond that was 17 carats for 270 million rupees. I sold it in Jakarta. I've been doing this business since 1976. I often buy colored diamonds. There are plenty of diamonds along the Landak River between Gabang and Upper River. But there are more in the area called Kuala Bihi. One person found a diamond of 44.35 carats in 1995. Uh, did you have a contact uh, in Jakarta? Yeah. Large stones, I have them cut in Jakarta, and I sell them there. My buyer is in the Bromo neighborhood. 
Itu aja. Ya pembelinya, Ating. The last diamonds I had cut were purchased by Mr. Edwin. Edwin is baptized name. Recently, a pink diamond that I bought for 200 million rupees, I sold for 1.2 billion rupees to Mr. Lim of Singapore. The rainforests of Borneo are aptly named. In 1997, serious disturbances broke out between the Dayaks and Muslim settlers from the island of Madura in East Java and caused many deaths. A thousand miles separates Kalimantan from Jakarta the capital of Indonesia, where the largest seller of colored diamonds in Asia is based, Mr. Edwin. Jakarta, populated by 12 million inhabitants, is a sprawling metropolis. Mr. Edwin has a virtual monopoly on all the colored diamonds of Kalimantan. His buyers, such as Ais Suparto, are present at the output of the mine and in all places of extraction of diamonds, and are the first to buy the stones for this outstanding account. Mr. I say me, you have a big diamond to... Do you have large diamonds to show me? Yes. I have pink, pale pink. It's 10.22 carats. 10 carats, 22. 10 carats? Yes. That's big. And this stone comes from... And this stone comes from Kalimantan? Yes, it comes from Kalimantan, from Pontianak. And do they find many colored diamonds in that place? The small, small, yes. Yes, small ones. The larger ones are very difficult to find these days. Today for the bigger one, intense. Intense yellow. Is it also from Pontianak? This is the rough 40. Yes, and the rough stone was 48 carats. It's yellow. It's yellow. Yellow, yes. It is a price of this stone. What is the price of this one? Maybe one carat. Eighty thousand dollars a carat. Eighty thousand US dollars. What is the most difficult? What color is the hardest to find? I think, the I think they're all difficult to find. White it's easy to find white diamonds, but diamonds of color are very, very difficult. Maybe Sometimes we buy raw blues and they become, after polishing, a sort of blue gray. And sometimes uh, the gray is the same for green and yellow green. Sometimes the rough stone is very green, and then you polish it by removing a type of skin, and it turns yellow, or sometimes it turns a green yellow. And that's where we lose money, lots and lots of money. skin already come to yellow. Sometimes come to yellow is green, green is yellow, and you put in the eye, sometimes come to anti and lose money, you know, many, many lose. The buyer can lose a lot of money with rough diamonds, paid dearly, whose color is poorly estimated. Some stones, such as green and red, are at a price several hundred times higher than a white diamond of equal weight. Do you find colored diamonds, Do you find colored diamonds in Kalimantan only? Mostly from, Mostly from Kalimantan, but occasionally I have offers from the royal family for diamonds. offers from the royal family who sell, you know, family-owned, old uh, gems. 
These are recent or old stones? These are old family stones. They sell them from time to time when they need it. Are you ever offered synthetic stones? Not really. Not really. But once I was presented with a stone that had been irradiated in a blue-green. It was offered to me by a stranger. And when we found out, the guy was excommunicated from the community. Do you buy the stones for yourself? Right now I have a special request of a big order of brown diamonds. I'm also looking for more special colored stones, pink and deep blue, for one of the largest specialists of colored diamonds in Antwerp. Fancy, intense blue and pink diamonds. Antwerp, in Belgium, is a major world center for diamond trading. Few men are specialized in the sale of these rare minerals. Less than 20 red diamonds have been identified in the world. Diamond is pure crystallized carbon. Generally transparent and colorless, the capricious nature has placed parasitic elements during its formation. Boron makes it blue. The presence of hydrogen gives it pink, red, or purple. Yellow is nitrogen. And the contact in nature with radioactive uranium salts generates green. The color palette is infinite, all the way to black in which there are inclusions of graphite carbon. Brown is often due to tensions in the crystal. My name is Arthur Langerman. For 50 years, I've been in the diamond trade. Actually, I started in diamond because after the war, there was only one profession in which one could make a living fairly quickly, and that was the trade of diamonds. I started by cleaning the floors and then looking for stones that fell, and then gradually I learned to cut, to saw. I saw all the facets of this business. After 10 years of learning, I became independent. I took all my little savings I had at the time and I started in business. This means buying a stone, trying to cut it, and trying to resell it for a living. And I was always fascinated by the diamonds that had colors other than white. And they had all these suave colors. They were more beautiful than white diamond. I thought that they were more beautiful than white diamond anyway. And there were not many people interested in them. There are people who dream of women, vacations, sex, the moon, I dream of diamonds. My fondest dreams are when I fall asleep at night and I dream that I'm carving a stone, and I dream of what it will become. I made a decision, and it was the main decision in my life. I said, I'll never touch a white diamond. I'll put my focus and my energy only into colored diamonds. I made a small charter of different colors myself, and I got to nearly 350 different colors. So in the classifications it looks like this, red diamond's the first, the second's the blue diamond, pink diamond's the third, then the green diamond, the orange diamond, the purple diamond. And then come the yellow, and after that are the cognac-colored diamonds, the olive-colored diamonds, and then there are all the colors in the rainbow. In fact, in the diamond it's pretty amazing, they are all the colors in nature. It's been counted that about one in 10,000 diamonds will be a colored diamond. And in 1987, there was a sale at Christie's where a red diamond that was 95% of a carat was sold for $880,000. That plus the 50% charge, and it was nearly $1 million, which was a price that was unheard of. And suddenly, the world woke up to colored diamonds. And we said, like with the diamond, the colored diamond is something that has great value. Its rarity is beautiful, and it's actually beautiful, it's rare, it's extraordinary. And so finally it's found some interest among the general public.
I'm Philippe Serre, I'm an expert jeweler. We participate in many public auctions with the help of auctioneers. This time, we'll sell a blue diamond that's 6.5 carats. It's quite a magical stone, unique, of which we encounter very few. Even a life where, as I've had a chance to come across many different stones, there are not more than three, four or five like this per year. And generally they're relatively new stones, whereas this is an old stone. It gives it charm. It's superior. This stone was estimated between 500,000 and 700,000 euros sold for 2,430,000 euros. In the end, its buyer paid, with fees, 2,793,105 euros. There are, of course, all the historical stones. There are beautiful historic stones which now belong in the major museums. From time to time, there's one that comes on the market. There's also a diamond in Paris now that's quite mysterious, and we don't know very well. It's almost never seen. The Condé, which is a pink diamond that could be from Golconda, perhaps even from Borneo, I don't know. But it's a beautiful diamond, apparently. I haven't seen it yet. I expect to see it in the museum. They've invited me to come see it. We're here at the Château de Chantilly. My name is Nicole Garnier, and I'm the chief curator of Heritage. The museum is responsible for the Condé diamond. I keep all the collections that were bequeathed to the Institut de France by the Duke of Aumale. Amongst the most beautiful jewels that were inherited from the prince in the 19th century is the pink diamond, the Grand Condé. While this diamond is exceptional in both size, 9.01 carats, and by its clarity and purity, well, this diamond has a very complicated and very strange story. It's believed, according to tradition, that it arrived in France at the end of the 17th century. It bears the name the Grand Condé, which would mean it was owned by Prince Chantilly in the 17th century. In 1926, thieves were going to break in. They would break a window pane, enter the room of gems, and steal all the jewels that were there for Christmas. And then four months later, shortly before Christmas, Christmas 1926, the following took place. Back in Paris, in a shabby little hotel near the Gare de l'Est, the robbers were Alsatians, the maid was a little concerned about these disturbing characters who would come and go, who wouldn't sleep there every night, who would leave suitcases. She spoke to the owner and she said, we have to make an inventory of the luggage that they moved into the wooden bell. They took the suitcase and in the suitcase was an apple and she thought the apple would stain the clothes if the people didn't come back right away. So she took a bite of the apple broke her tooth, and in it found the pink diamond that was hidden inside. I recently had an order from a jeweler. He needed more or less about 10,000 stones, brown, to decorate the interior of a car. And the difficulty of this operation was that the diamond needed to be calibrated to a hundredth of a millimeter. So I've been here for two months, getting the brown diamonds, all colors, calibrating them. So it was very, very difficult, uh, generally, to try to fulfill my duties. Uh, I almost gave up ten times because I had to call on the world's production to be able to make this car. Contrary to what one should do, uh, what people usually do is they take the diamonds first and um, and then the holes where they'd be able to set it. Uh, jewelers have the habit, the crazy habit, of first making the holes and then ordering the diamonds. I lead a workshop for high-end jewelry. We received an order for a quite exceptional piece, meaning that we needed to make an Aston Martin in diamonds, meaning the dashboard and the door elements, for a rich client in the United Arab Emirates. So nearly two and a half months ago, we received the parts directly from Aston Martin, an Aston Martin DB9, and we began to enrich it and put diamonds into it. 
l'enrichir et de mettre des diamants dessus. Nous avons calculé pour l'instant... We calculated for now there are nearly 8,300 stones and I think we will need to have sorted at least 40,000 stones to find the exact size. It's a piece that will be made in machining. We could not drill holes by hand because we don't have the precision enough. So we study everything in CAD, meaning computer-aided design. Then we'll drill using CNC machines, huge machines. We'll drill holes and then we'll affix the diamonds one by one. There should be 1,200 to 1,300 carats of diamonds. avoir à peu près 1,200, 1,300 carats de diamants. For us, it's a gem that's out of the ordinary. But you must have the same requirements as for a jewel. We studied 52 different adhesives. We worked with a manufacturer of adhesives to find the right balance. It requires very specific constraints. Temperature vibrations are also very important. So we have a torture room and we made tests for several months. On a une salle de torture et on a fait des essais pendant plusieurs mois. Brown diamonds, the cognac color, are rated according to their size. But what's harder to do is to choose each stone according to the shade of color. Indeed, a perfect harmony of color must be obtained out of hundreds of stones. It was a feat to finish this piece. And indeed, if we needed to redo one, it would take several months just to find the stones. We completely, as they say, dried the market up. All stones available were purchased for this project. And after our stone suppliers, it should be a minimum of six months to gather the stones we would need in order to make a second car. So I hope our client doesn't resell right away, because otherwise we're in trouble. The jeweler, Cyril Mott, on top of his wild dreams, has a unique recipe for combining the expertise of French jewelry with his inventive creations. The subtle mix between a mechanical monster and the delicacy of a gemstone, this car is a unique jewel in the world. Like large diamonds and exceptional jewelry, inaccessible to ordinary mortals, it is located outside of time and of human reason.
In letting the diamonds leave the forest of Borneo, did the Dayak shamans not want to heal our disconnected and futile world? <laughs> 